So the next grave site we visited in uh, Linwood in Columbus was uh, the inventor of Coca-Cola. So check out this video. I'm out here in Linwood Cemetery in Columbus, Georgia. Uh, coming out here to visit the grave site of the inventor of Coca-Cola. His name is John Stiff Pemberton. I apologize for the noise. There uh, were workers out doing the weed eating and stuff, as you can see from the photographs on the on the grave site here. John. Stiff Pemberton. John Stiff Pemberton, born July 8, 1831. He died August 16, 1888. Was an American pharmacist who was best known as the inventor of Coca Cola. In May 1886, he developed an early version of a beverage that would later become world famous as Coca Cola but sold his rights to the drink shortly before his death. In April 1865, Dr. Pemberton sustained a saber wound to the chest during the Battle of Columbus. He soon became addicted to the morphine used to ease his pain. In 1866, seeking a cure for his addiction, he began to experiment with painkillers that would serve as morphine-free alternatives to morphine. His first recipe was Dr. Tuggy's compound syrup and globe flour, in which the active ingredient was derived from the button bush, a toxic plant that is common in Alaska. He next began experimenting with coca and coca wines, eventually creating a recipe that contained extract of coca nut and dalanana, which he called Pemberton's French wine coca. According to Coca-Cola historian Phil Mooney, Pemberton's famous World Famous Soda was created in Columbus, Georgia and carried to Atlanta. With public concern about drug addiction, depression, and alcoholism among war veterans and neurolesnia among highly strong Southern women, Pemberton's medicine was advertised as particularly beneficial for ladies and all those who sedentary, sedentary, employment caused nervous something. In 1866, I'm sorry, 1886, when Atlanta and Fulton County enacted temperance legislation, Pemberton's, Pemberton had to produce a non-alcoholic alternative to his French wine coca. Pemberton relied on Atlanta drugstore owner, proprietor Willis E. Venable to test and help him perfect the recipe for the beverage, which he formulated by trial and error with venerable assistance. Pemberton worked out a set of directions for its preparation. He blended the base syrup with carbonated water by accident when trying to make another glass full of the beverage. Pemberton decided then to sell this as a fountain drink rather than a medicine. Frank Mason Robinson came up with the name Coca-Cola for the alternative sound, alternative sound, which was popular among other wine medicines of the time. Although the name refers to the two main ingredients because of the controversy over its cocaine content, the Coca-Cola company later said that the name 
was meaningless but factual. Fanful. Uh, Robinson hand wrote the Spencerian script on the bottles and ads. Pemberton made many health claims for his product, touting it as a valuable brain tonic that would cure headaches, relieve exhaustion, and calm nerves, and marketed it as delicious, refreshing, pure joy, exhilarating, and invigorating. Soon after Coca-Cola hit the market, Dr. Pimbleton fell ill and nearly bankrupt. Sick and desperate, he began selling rights to his formula to his business partner in Atlanta. Part of his motivation to sell was that he was still suffering from an expensive continuing morphine addiction. Pimbleton had a hunch that his formula someday would be a national drink, so he attempted to retain a share of the ownership to lead to his son. However, Pem Pemberton's son wanted the money, so in 1888, John and his son sold the remaining Pemberton portion of the patent to a fellow Atlanta pharmacist, Asa Griggs, for uh, $1,750. John Pemberton died from stomach cancer at age 57 in August 1888. At the time of his death, he also suffered from poverty and addiction to morphine. His body was returned to Columbus, Georgia, where he was buried at Linwood Cemetery. His grave marker is engraved with symbols showing his service in the Confederate Army and his membership as a Freemason. His son, Charlie, continued to sell his father's formula, but six years later, Charles Pemberton died after having become an opium addict.